Welcome to episode 2 out of 55 of my Species Spotlight series, where I'm going to be trying to spotlight every single species we have in Wisconsin, and we're going to be doing the second one on the green frog. Hope you guys enjoy. The scientific name of the green frog is actually Lithobates clamatins, and they're a very, very common species here in Wisconsin, even more popular than the American toad. Literally every water source I go to has them. These guys are absolutely everywhere. They grow two and a half to three and a half inches around, that's like the average, kind of a medium sized amphibian, and can be light green, dark green, or even brown, and usually dark spots throughout. However, I have found an all lime green adult northern green frog. That thing was just stunning. And so another way you can identify green frogs is they have prominent dorsolateral folds that run from behind the eye all the way to about the groin or the end of the back section. And that is how you can tell them from a bullfrog. Bullfrogs, I'll do a whole nother video on them, do not have this. So those two lines on their back is how you can tell. And so male green frogs actually have bright yellow chins, especially during the breeding season, and actually have a mating call which sounds a little bit like this. There we go. So for males, they have bigger eardrums than their eyes around. Sometimes the eardrums are two times bigger than their eyes. And for females, they have a little bit smaller eardrums. Usually it's about the same size as their eye or even a little smaller. Unlike American toads, these guys like pretty much every other frog species in Wisconsin, lay eggs in large masses and attach them to floating vegetation, which the toads actually lay them in strands. And some of the habitat that green frogs can be found in includes marshes, ponds, lakes, creeks, rivers, and literally everywhere there's water. I've even found them in vernal pools, which obviously they don't breed in because they need their tadpoles to be able to overwinter, but they are absolutely everywhere. There are actually two subspecies of the green frog, including the northern green frog, which is found here in Wisconsin, and the bronze frog, which is found elsewhere. They can actually be found in every county throughout Wisconsin, like I said, a very popular frog. And if you find a frog and you're wondering if it's a bullfrog or a green frog, it might be a green frog more than likely because of how common they are. And green frogs are pretty much feeding on little insects, anything that they can fit in their mouth, maybe some little fish, little tadpoles, crayfish, things that they can fit in their mouth, they're going to swallow it and try to eat it. And so if you're ever walking near a pond and you hear something jump in and make a little eek noise, it was probably a green frog. I'm not sure if bullfrogs can make the same noise, I'll have to look into this, but green frogs make a little bit of an eek noise when they're scared and they're usually hanging out on the sides of the water sources and will jump into the water to escape a predator or so whatever's walking up onto them. So that is a pretty cool thing. And their tadpoles, like I said before, can overwinter just like bullfrog tadpoles, so they can basically be under the ice the whole winter and survive. So from what I found, green frogs breed late spring into the summer, and their little tadpoles can actually metamorphize the same summer that they were born. They don't have to overwinter, but if they're born a little bit late, then they will overwinter. So that is pretty much all the info I've gathered from the Wisconsin DNR's website, as well as my knowledge and fellow herping YouTubers on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, episode 2 out of 55, and I hope to one day cross off all 55 species, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.